May the Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome to Jerusalem Presbyterian Church on this beautiful Sunday morning. Do we have any announcements before we begin today? I want to give a big thank you to everybody who came out to the all-church party last night. I think we had a wonderful time. It was a little small of a crowd because we know that we've got quite a few people out sick, but even though they're not here, I want to thank the Kilpatricks for being gracious hosts again this year. Any other announcements. Yes, Nettie. My husband and I are going to be entertaining all of you, I hope, on December 28th, that's Thursday, from uh, 6 to 8, we're celebrating our 60th wedding anniversary. Oh, yeah, three pillars in the community room. And in, in the large community room at, yeah. at the Village on the Square, right? Wonderful. All right, any other announcements. So this is obviously Sunday, a week from today. Sunday is Christmas Eve. We will be having a Christmas Eve service in the morning at 9.30, and we'll be having our traditional candlelight service that evening at 7.30. Come to both. They're going to be different. If you can only come to one, that's great too. I know a lot of people have different plans for, for Christmas Eve this year since it's on a Sunday, so I would love to see as many people at, at both the services as possible. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me, and his holy and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the The first reading is from 2 Samuel. Now when the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Therefore I have moved among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people, <clears throat> to shepherd people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now, therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be a prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you, and I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint, appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may live in their own place, and be disturbed no more. And evil do doers shall afflict them no more as formerly from the time that I appointed judges over my, over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. So ends the reading. 
Let us pray. Wonderful and merciful God, as we approach the incarnation, as we come through Advent, heading towards Christmas, we ask that you hear our prayers, that you be present with us as we prepare not just our world, but our hearts for you coming again. We pray this day for all who are battling illnesses and ailments, for all those who are having surgery, for all those who are recovering. We ask that you be with those especially who have cancer, and we pray especially today for Becky as she continues to undergo chemotherapy. We ask that you keep her strong and also uh, keep her spirit up. We pray this day for your whole church family, for all those who are gathered here and for the merriment of the season, but we pray also for those who are needing your spirit, <coughs> for those who are called <laughs> to be your hands in this world. We pray this day for our leaders and leaders around the globe that they may find your peace, that they may lift up your joy, and they may lift up your love. We ask that you be with not just the things that I've spoken out loud and all the things that are spoken by everyone here, but the prayers that are deepest within our hearts, the ones that go unmentioned because they are so deep that we are reserved even to utter them. We pray all of this in the precious and yet powerful name of Jesus Christ, who taught disciples of all nations to pray, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our second reading for today is a reading of the Annunciation. And it says, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came to her and said, greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child will be born, and will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for who, her who is said to be barren for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be according to me with your word. Then the angel departed from her. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I wonder if you remember what it was like when you were in Sunday school back, you know, a year or two ago. Um, our, our play this morning deals a little bit with the differences in ages. So what we have this morning is we will have some preschoolers and early primary students who are trying to actually say the words and, and read when they don't read. So that's, that's, that's part of the story. The other part is the little bit older children who are going to be um, not so much doing the actual birth story as they're going to be talking about prophecy and the prophecy of a Messiah coming. That's what they've been learning about, and we're going to try to apply that today. The, the play goes back and forth between the two groups, and we're hopeful that it will not have too many ad-libs, 
or interesting kinds of things that don't have anything to do well, with it. We've been tying up the, the information that we have in the Old Testament, the discussion about the prophets. Zach, will you remind us what a prophet was? A prophet at that time um, spoke for God. Sometimes it was about what was happening right then, but sometimes it was in the future. Ah, that's right. So then, Mackenzie, what would a prophecy be? It would be the words that the prophet used to tell the people what God wanted them to know. Sometimes it was for right then, but it was often to tell about something that would happen in the future. Mm. Then Henry, how do we know that a prophecy is real or something that someone made up? It's real if it actually happens like the prophecy said it would. Ho oh, ho, you guys are perfect. Now, since we're getting so close to Christmas, we're going to see if we can apply what we know about prophecy and whether it was correct that the birth of Jesus was the birth of the Messiah that people had been waiting for. The Messiah was supposed to be a descendant of Abraham and that all the families would be blessed. Well, we know that we can trace Jesus' ancestry all the way back to Abraham, and our world is certainly blessed by his coming. So, can we say that this first prophecy was fulfilled, everybody? Yup. Yep. So Isaiah prophesied that the Messiah would be born to a virgin and that he would be named Emmanuel, which means God with us. Does this fit up with what we know about Jesus? How many names did Jesus have? Was he named Emmanuel Jesus or Emmanuel G or um, Jesus Emmanuel or what? Great question. Um, Jesus was called many different things. But this one meant God with us and fit with his birth as God coming to be with mankind in human form. We know that Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Is there a prophecy that said that the Messiah would be born there, Mackenzie? In Micah it says, but you, O Bethlehem of Euphratha, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me, one who is to rule in Israel, one who whose origin is from of old. I'm not sure that Jesus fulfills that prophecy exactly. It says that Messiah, the Messiah is supposed to rule in Israel like a king or something. I don't think that Jesus did that. And it says he's from old. Jesus came after Micah, so how is that possible? I love that you're really thinking about this, Zach. So far as we know, Jesus was with, was with God from the beginning, even before man. And the promise is that he will rule on earth at some point. But his kingdom wouldn't look at all like what we think of today. Hmm. 
stones you. Well, let's put a pin in that for right and move on. What happened to Mary and Joseph when they got to Bethlehem? Did they stay in a Hilton Resort Hotel? I got to stay there too. Well, Mary and Joseph didn't. They stayed in, they stayed in the crummy old barn, and Jesus got born right then. Yeah, and Joseph stood right beside Mary, so she wasn't getting scared of those of having Jesus. Let's move Mary and Joseph and the donkey to the creche and put baby Jesus in the manger. Nice job. Henry, will you read about the shepherds in Psalms 72, verse 9? Remember. The shepherds were considered the lowest of the low at that time, not exactly the people that you would expect to be the first to hear about the arrival of a Messiah. It says, may his foes down bow before, down before him and his enemies lick the dust. I guess they were pretty scummy. Mm, so true. <laughs> Jesus always seemed to care about the poor people and criticize the rich ones. We can't ignore the fact that um, the angels said that a Messiah had just been born. They wouldn't have known he was anyone special if the angels hadn't told the shepherds. This must be one of those times when they were being told what God wanted them to know right, um, to know right then and not in the future. Spot on, Zach. Let's talk about the angels that appeared to the shepherds who were out with their sheep at night. They just they just showed up in the sky and started singing or something. I bet the shepherds were afraid of those angels. Are they the ones? Who had to light up? They certainly shone brightly, Bryn. What did they tell the shepherds to do? That's easy. They were supposed to go and hunt up Jesus and worship him. That's right, Kaylee. Let's put our shepherds in the crash too. Mackenzie, will you read us the prophecy about how the Messiah would come and what power he would have? In Isaiah it says, For us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And Henry, read us what Jesus read from Isaiah. Watch the, this. The Spirit is upon me because... He has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release, release to the captives and recovery. Recovery of sight to of sight to the blind and to let the oppressed the oppressed go free to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Does that fit with our description of what Jesus was like? Yeah, it sounds like what Mackenzie said, a nice guy with lots more names. Let's see what Balaam prophesied about the wise men who came to worship Jesus. And who was Balaam? 
Well, he was a soothsayer. He was, he was a fortune teller who could predict the future. But he apparently was in the know about God. Zach, will you read us what it says way back in the book of Numbers? It says, I see him, but not near. I behold him. Oh, wait. I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star shall come from, forth from Jacob. A scepter shall rise from Israel. Let's stop there. Since the prophecy is from Numbers, could it pertain to Jesus? I think so. After all, it's a star that led the Magi to visit Jesus. What do we know about the Magi that came to visit Jesus? Were those the wise guys? Uh, they were actually pretty smart, Dawson. They were men who studied the stars and tried to understand how they moved. I know that they were the ones bringing ex ring very expensive gifts fit by visiting Jesus. That's right, Kaylee. They brought gold and frankincense and myrrh. Did they get down on the ground too? They did worship Jesus, Bryn. Sometimes people bow down really low when they worship. Shouldn't we put the wise guys in the barn too? We aren't going to do that yet because the wise men didn't actually get to Bethlehem while Jesus was a new baby. It took them some time to get there. Is he as big as me? Maybe that, not that old, Bryn, but he was not a brand new baby either. So, guys, as of right now, can we say that we think the prophecies pointed to the birth of Jesus? I Probably. guess. I guess. Let's gather our stuff up and get ready to go. I think we know quite a bit about Jesus' birth. We'll do some practicing over the next few weeks, and we can tell the story for your parents. Okay, gather up your stuff, guys. Catch you next week. How did it go? I know you were wondering if the connection would be made to the prophecies. Well, I think it went pretty well, except maybe that king business. Well, we probably have to sort out the age of Grandpa, and the angels having heads that light up, and oh yes, the wise guys. Hey, tell me about those wise guys. You know, I love the way Dawson says things, and I bet that was Dawson that said that, was it? Mm -hmm. One, two, three. Did, did I miss my entrance? Oh. So we have had such a wonderful time today. Uh, I hope that the kids will come back on up so y'all can chat with them about it. Uh, I'm grateful for Jane and for Marge and all their leadership, for all the, the parents that came out yesterday and brought their kids yesterday to uh, the, the rehearsal, and just grateful for the Christmas season, for the joy in being able to tell the story as we pass it on through the generations. So receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you, and may God hold you in the palm of God's hands from now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace. Mm -hmm.